Well, it looks like it's just another, another goddamn day in paradise here. Good morning, friends. It's me, your old friend Martin. I'm still in Japan, and uh, where I am right now is an abandoned field that is uh, very close to my house. And this field used to be a set of greenhouses. Now, it's being reclaimed by nature. It's just something else. If Japan ever does have this renaissance that I fancy, where a bunch of young white folks with the types that moved into Williamsburg and revitalized it and regenerated it come here, these greenhouses, oh my goodness. I'll say things like, oh, I remember when those greenhouses were abandoned. You could have gotten one of those for a nickel. But these greenhouses really get ripe around this time of year. And this is an abandoned house. In the midst of these greenhouses, it's kind of hard to explain the scale and scope of this. But I think this was a vineyard over here. this the cross this symbol is just forever reoccurring in nature i mean and of course the mountain is still the mountain because i am still i and this bee try to get through here Ooh, ah. this is a house that's returning to nature but over here is a field. Oh, and this is shiso. It's just growing in a crack. It's purple shiso. Mm, that was hemlock. That wasn't purple shiso. <laughs> no, it's not hemlock. But this field, no. Well, every year, either it changes or I study it more. Because now, it seems to be filled with mountain yam, which are those big elephant leaf things. Or red shiso. And then over there in the background, zinnias. And then over there in the extreme background, it's a beautiful piece of crumbling architecture. When you come around this little corner here, I chase my kid through here like we're in some... Guy Ritchie movie. I've never watched a Guy Ritchie movie, but I used to imagine. There's an old Bachan. This is another abandoned house. You can actually poke in the window. Well, you cleaned it out a little bit. Huh. But along this path, yeah, these are these mountain yam plants. But then, some more zinnias. Wow, that's a sh ton of zinnias. Look at that. Let me just uh, get around here. It's gonna be a K truck right here. One of my favorite K truck parking jobs. But look back at the Zinnias. I don't go to the Zimus Zinnias. I mean, the Zinnias grow like weeds here. So, <clears throat> back in the 90s, in the 90s, uh, there was this application Napster that helped destroy the music business. It was a uh, Sean, someone, one of those guys in the social network movie, invented this application that let us finally just steal as much music as we wanted to. And one of the things I stole was, is this it by The Strokes? The Strokes' first record. And that 
was one of my first loner loser pump up records. They had the Bruce Stretch. The uh, actually it was in the nineties. I'm wrong. This is the post apocalyptic post apocalyptic era. It's after the uh, World Trade Centers fell over. But Napster had been invented, and the music industry had been decimated. Point being is that I got a lot of albums, but without the artwork or track listings. So what happened is that often, I was, these are onions that are aging. It's the onion aging era. They're not aging, they're curing. I'm curing some potatoes myself right now. Get into that later. Get this, another accidental Andrew White. Well, come look here then. Another piece of beauty. I wish I knew how to freeze this decomposition process. Frame these suckers. But I'm never, ever, ever going to do that. So as I was saying, so after Napster, you'd get a lot of music without the track listings. So one of the byproducts would be, is that, oh, hi, Ogozaimas. One of the byproducts would be is that you would sometimes hear records in the wrong order. Now some records, oh, hi, Ogozaimas. Some records, it's easy to figure out the order. But is this it by the strokes? was the song, was the album that I listened to. <sighs> Looking at me here in Japan, you may not think that I'm a loner, <laughs> but I tend to, to be a lifelong loner and also a lifelong, incredibly gregarious person. Pretty horrendous, confusing combination. But I used to like to listen to this album, Is This It? And I got really into it. It was sort of my ritual de lo habitual. You can read between the lines. So I put on Is This It by the Strokes, do a little pre-gaming in my apartment before heading out around midnight. Because nothing ever happened good before midnight. These are, this is a younger man speaking. I mean, I'm an old man now, but when I was a younger man, this is the way I saw the world. It's not even worth going out before midnight. And Fridays and Saturdays are for losers. So, you know, this is like, I hated going out all the time. I never went out anywhere, but for like three years, I went, I went out for like three straight years to make up for it. And then I just quit going out. Let's take a look at this. So there was a stretch when I would go out for about three years and I would play Is This It? And I really got into it and I realized probably about mm, five years or so after I stopped listening to it and had a bit of a lifestyle changed and slowed down and stopped trying to eradicate myself. That I've been listening to it backwards. 
like the first record, the, the last song on the album was the first that I was listening to. And the first song on the album was the last that I was listening to. So I've been listening to it backwards the whole time. Cause the last track sounds like a lullaby. You know, it's the, it's the theme, the theme track, is this it, is this it, is this it, is this it. You know, it, 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 it proposes the existential question, is this it? So I thought that was sort of like the, the, um, which, what was it? Yeah, is this it is the last is is the is the is the first track but i've been listening to it backwards so i thought that was the last track Man, that was rambling that's not going to make any that's going to make sense to about one person the bigger picture the idea that i'm trying to get across with that jarbled metaphor is that it's so hard to figure out if you're seeing things in the right order it's uh, hard to figure out if what is it it's like uh, that play our town like you never know if these are the good old days oh how good time is kitty chan I mean, it's a theme in a lot of pieces of music. I mean, Bob Marley, you think it's the end, but it's just the beginning. You know, Thornton Wilder's, I think, Our Town, I think it has a line about somewhere, stand by me, you know? It's hard to know if these are the good old days when they're happening. But even though I greatly protest and contemplate and ask you to commiserate with me on these little diatribes and missives and soliloquies despite everything I'm certain that these are actually the good old days this lake behind me is uh named after a prostitute and a monk who had a forbidden love. And the uh, prostitute drowned herself in the lake. Everything I ever tell you about Japanese history is like 75% wrong. That's the, so just take 25% of the story is true. That's the idea. There was a prostitute, there was a monk, there was a drowning. I would give you the exact name of the lake, but I feel like I'll come back home and there'll be someone sitting at my front doorsteps. As has happened in the past. So these gentlemen are fishing for carp. It's catch and release. They're just in it for the love of the game. Like Jay-Z posts Black Album. Is this it? Is this it? Is this it? The rice fields are at their summer riciest.
that over there, that's a very important building to me. That's the post office where I will be sending out in the next week or so my uh, photographs through my Patreon, which I I beg you to join. There's this, the, the, royal, the royal six of us are there right now. If only 194 more of you would come along with me, then uh, this is all I would do. Let's walk down this path. This is this is rice that I didn't mention before. People say to me about my uh, poor Japanese acquisition skills. Martin, Martin, you should just go to the local izakaya and just practice your English. I'm like, brother man, you don't seem to understand how far out there this uh, son of a home ec teacher is living. There is no izakaya. I mean, let me let me rephrase that. There is an izakaya. There's an izakaya with like uh, two seats, bright fluorescent lights, and like one local. There's no like uh, yakitori sizzling. There's no gaijin questioning and judging. It's like in the morning, it was ridiculous. Look at these metaphorical boats. These cautionary tails made of wood. These boats have been sinking since I landed here. And yes, I have been out on one of these boats. I was documenting a um, festival for one of the uh, town's folks here. And they said, Martin San, let me take you out on the lake. Now, I like all black people. I, like many black people, are terrible swimmers. So I said, yeah, man, let's go out in the lake. Actually, I said, okay, daijoubu. Using my extensive Japanese. So we go out in the lake, no life vest. About the maximum amount of swimming I could possibly do to save myself so to get back to the edge. Ah, you know, it's my neighbor got in the lake. We paddle out, it's placid, it's peaceful. I mean, it's this lake. We got out there, we're paddling along. Shortly, the boat begins to take on water. And, oh, of course, um, as I mentioned, I'm with my son. So the love of my life and myself are in a lake on a boat taking on water. An apt metaphor in many ways. And uh, the man who's paddling the boat, respectable, Nihon Jin hands me a dustpan and says, oh, you know, gambate. So he knows the lake's going to, the boat's going to flood, but the plan, the established mode of going out in one of those boats is to be in a constant state of bailing. This is the entrance to one of the local shrines. So we're out on the boat. I'm trying to keep my cool. And I'm bailing, and I'm bailing. There's a 
a dust pan, you know, a dust pan, like a Western dust pan. And I'm <laughs> emptying the water as the boat's taking on water. We made it back because obviously, because I'm talking to you now, but on this placid lake, my heart did race. Speaking of heart racing, is this it by the strokes? So yeah, I would put on, is this it? And I would like get ready in the house. Me and the Kohayo gozaimasu. Me and Joe Campbell. And uh, the Heineken man. Get a little juiced up and head out to uh, this club down. This was the spot, man. This was Hades. This was, you know, this is where I shook hands with the devil. This place called Lit Lounge, the Lower East Side of New York City. After the World Trade Center fell down, you know, New York City, the day the World Trade Center fell down, I would just driven from Los Angeles to New York. I dropped my friend off on Chamber Street. And I went back to my girlfriend's time, girlfriend at the time's house. And I crashed. I woke up in the morning to her friend saying, Martin, a uh, plane hit the World Trade Center, turn on the news. So I walked down to the water and I saw the, uh, one of the towers on fire. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. And then, I begin to, you know, see the magnitude of the disaster unfolding. And, it, you know, it gets very fuzzy. But I, one of the World Trade Centers fell. And I, was, I watched it fall from, like, about the distance. Let's see here. I saw the World Trade Center, one or two, I'm not sure which one fell, from about over there. So, you know, within a pretty close proximity, but not close enough to be covered in the dust. Everyone got covered in the dust when the World Trade Center fell. Um, the strangest of things happened. Like, I watched the first white rate World Trade Center fall, and then I... There's something that happens to your brain when faced with, like, incredible data like, my brain just, like, I went home. Like, I witnessed this tragedy this, in a tactile sense, and I just went back to my house. And then, you know what happened next? I have no idea what happened next. Because my tape recorder of memory shut off for about... 72 hours. It's like the great lost time. I'm not sure what happened. No one knows where I went. It's just... It's just missing time. It's a long story about the strokes, huh? So, there was this era of... Uh, post-apocalyptic New York for some of us where um, you know nothing uh, nothing seemed to matter It's not like a, you know, like a teenager, like, it doesn't matter, but nothing, nothing really mattered. And uh, 
you know, somewhere in that era is when I discovered the Strokes and is this it. And Lit Lounge. So there was this place, Lit Lounge. And man, ohayou gozaimasu, ohayou gozaimasu. <laughs> there was this place, Lit Lounge. And man, I tell you, it was party at ground zero in that joint. I mean, woo! I have pictures. It was before the era of cell phones being ubiquitous and DSLRs and all that shit. So everyone just let it rip. I mean, it was debauchery. <laughs> I mean, it was just like nudity. Like Elliot Smith played there. Like, ah, just, it was just, I would run into like, I don't want to name drop, but you would run into like, massive but it wasn't like a club you know with like a velvet rope it was a shithole in a basement in the east village it was like the last great club of the east village now, I, this story would be best punctuated with individual incidences of strange things and me and celebrities but that's just not the way i roll point being it's not uh it's like jeffrey lebowski what was my point Somewhere there was a point in there. See, getting messed up in the apartment, going out at midnight, heading to Lit Lounge, seeing a bunch of nipples and guitars. Ah, is this it, man? Because I have no game, I have no game. Because I have no game, I would always go there with such anticipation of, you know, one night stands and having this rock and roll lifestyle. But all that ever happened was just getting really shmai on clugs <laughs> and going home, which ended up making a, you know, there was a, there was an, the soundtrack began with the strokes is the sit being played backwards. And the uh, soundtrack ended with uh, how soon is now by the Smiths someone slowly descending back to planet Earth. An astronaut. So what's the moral of this story? Be born at the right time before cell phones. Get a chance to enjoy a bunch of illicit substances before fentanyl gets in the mix. Stop at the critical time. Meet the right woman. Move to Japan. Have a kid in the nick of time. And then uh, make some YouTube videos soliciting advice as to what to do next. That's the way I've done it. And look at how great it's turned out. Like perfect, man. Got the, got the better part of a, I'm a, I'm a millionaire over here. In the end, got down min millionaire. Just brings us back to the local shrine. This has been even more rambling than I intended. I just wanted to take a walk. I decided to take you with me. Sometimes I think that there's like. Oh look, the thingamajiggy's still up. I'm making a video for my, <laughs> I'm making a video for my Patreon subscribers about a festival that happened here at my local shrine. And some of the remnants are still up from that festival. And we're gonna explore these things and an intimate look at my folks. But this is the archway that you went through to go to the local shrine, following these instructions. Now, that doesn't ruin anything for everyone, <laughs> the six of us behind the Patreon wall, but um, a lot of wild, not wild stuff broke out. It's not like being back at Lit Lounge in the 90s, but a lot of uh, really interesting things happened. There was a parade unlike any other out of the temple and through the town. 
I mean, part of the reason, I'm not trying to tease this to make you subscribe to Patreon, it's just, I have a role as the unofficial official town photographer here. And so I get this like really intimate access to things, the things that I don't share with you and the broader internet, because people really don't, are not guarded with me. So I have all these intimate things that I get to shoot. And I finally figured out that Patreon was a place to put them without uh, feeling like I'm just putting them out there in the big world like I do with these nonsensical videos. Tomatoes. Peanuts. Watermelons. Cucumbers. Strong eggplant game this year. Eggplants are going so well this year. Sweet potatoes. And this is one of my favorites. This is kabocha being grown on a simple. Ooh, let me get my stupid shadow out of the shot. These are kabocha being grown on a simple platform. Like these tea fields are no longer tended to for real tea. I mean, you can drink this, of course. Oops, let's see if I can focus a little bit. I mean, geez, Louise. I mean, this is a, this is green tea. It's you can totally drink it. But these tea bushes are out of the real tea game. They're just maintained. But someone built this little platform and the kabocha it's growing over the tea bushes this is more tea that's just pretty much ornamental at this point huh. i would show you something but it's going to be pointing a camera directly in the window of my neighbor which is never a good idea the back side of the shrine. So, uh, until next time, I'll be here in Japan with my tales of Lit Lounge and the Strokes and the World Trade Center. Hope you have a, a good one. Ohio Kazaimas, my neighbor, cleaning up. Goodbye, friend. Have a great weekend.